And this morning we're going to uh, we're going to do something a little different for the message, and, and um, we're going to we're going to worship God through the the gift of song. Um, back in 1978, uh, there was a, a young songwriter that moved to Nashville from New York City, and um, he moved here kind of on a whim. He heard that you know people get paid to write songs in Nashville, and he thought, why not give it a shot? He was tired of living uh, in New York, and um, now here we are, almost exactly. Uh, 40 years later, and um, we know that that person is Tom Schuyler, and we know that um, uh, that Tom has been an integral part of, of not only the music industry in Nashville, but also uh, the life of, of this congregation. So I'm going to share a scripture, and then Tom and I are going to talk a little bit, but mostly he's going to play uh, some of the songs that he's written over the years that this congregation has uh, grown to know and love. So our first text this morning is from Psalm 61, and keep in mind that all the songs that he'll play Uh, have a a scriptural basis. Uh, Psalm 61, beginning with verse one. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever, find refuge under the shelter of your wings. And then let's turn uh, again. We've uh, been looking at the, the letter of Philippians the past couple of weeks. And let's turn to Paul's letter to the Philippians and look at the very beginning um, of that epistle where we find these words, beginning with verse three. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. We ask God's blessing upon the reading uh, of his word. Um, Tom, every time we think of you, we're going to give thanks to God for all that you uh, mean to this congregation and for all that you have meant. Uh, Does 40 years go by fast or not so fast? Um, I would say... uh, really fast. Um, yeah, I, uh, sometimes I still think I'm 19 and, uh, sometimes I feel like I'm 90, uh, when I'm getting out of bed in the morning, but, um, no, it's been a delightful, delightful time here in Nashville. Uh, Nashville has been very kind to, uh, my family and, and me, and of course this congregation, um, as, as well. Um, and, and I wanted to say, uh, that, that, any awkwardness that uh, uh, Donovan referenced, uh, let's just kind of dismiss that and have fun with this. Um, let, let me give you, a, uh, to set the stage for that, I want to give you just a little peek uh, behind the curtain of my relationship with Clay. Uh, I got home from Thanksgiving yesterday and I hadn't checked my email and it said, uh, I had an email that said, uh, Dear, <clears throat> dear Hillary, I have been uh, given access to some of the questions that Clay is going to ask you during the sermon time. <laughs> Love, Donna. So, uh, <laughs> that's your senior minister for you. It's uh, <laughs> very, very politically involved. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, uh, I couldn't have uh, imagined uh, a town, a city, an industry, or a church welcoming me, me more uh, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, wider arms. Um, but yeah, it goes fast. Um, I, I remember the first time I got involved with the youth choir here. Uh, I think it was in 83, maybe 84. And uh, Allison Buchan, uh, Allison Carpenter Buchan was a senior in high school. And uh, last year, uh, um, her youngest son graduated from high school. So it's been a long time that I've been knocking around with you folks, and I'm, I'm grateful. So tell us about the first song that you guys are going to sing, or do you just want to do it? Yeah, um, uh, Tulu, my daughter Tulu Quinn is going to sing uh, a song with me uh, that was based uh, roughly on the 
the passage that you just read from Psalms, uh, Clay. Uh, it's called Lead Me to the Brother. I grew up going to Bethany Hills with uh, Tulu, and, and she's always had an angelic voice, and um, it's clear to see that it runs in the family. Um, and uh, it's, it's, you got it mom. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, when did you first start? I know you've been writing songs your whole career, but when did you first start writing songs uh, at Woodmont for the for the youth choir and the youth? Yeah, it was in the early '80s. So there was a young woman, uh, probably in her early 20s, who was attending the church at that time and had gotten involved with the youth group as a as a volunteer. Uh, her name was Laura Rogers, and uh, I'm still in touch with Laura a little bit, and she just approached me uh, kind of off the cuff and said, uh, why don't you come and let's get a, a little youth choir together. She was a singer. And, uh, and I said, okay. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it's really hard to get a song recorded down on Music Row, and uh, so I was tired of uh, people saying no to me, so I came and I, I forced these kids to sing my song. <laughs> <laughs> made me feel good about myself. Uh, no, it's been, it's been a tremendous blessing. Uh, uh, there, so Lara was the first director, uh, then there was a, a lovely woman who was a mother of some youth at the time. Uh, many of you will remember uh, Laurel Woods. And, uh, and then Barb Lofton, they, uh, they were the three directors over the roughly, I don't know, 30 years, I guess. A lot of those youth have grown up, gone to college, become young men and young women. Yeah. And um, I know a couple of them are here this morning and uh, are gonna, are are gonna sing with you. Um, lots of talented kids have passed through that youth choir and uh, some mm, not so talented. <laughs> and, uh, we, made, we made the best of, uh, of every, you know, we, we would we would rehearse typically around 4:30 on a Sunday afternoon, and um, uh, 
you know, sometimes like three kids would show up and sometimes 45 kids would show up and I never knew. Uh, of course, when the three kids showed up, they were always the least talented and I'd have to <laughs> sit there with them for an hour. Um, I'm going to introduce two of the very best uh, and the sweetest and dear pals, uh, Brooke Huffman, who is the, the daughter of our dear friend and former uh, accompanist, Sarah Huffman, who's playing in the consort today, and also Liza Music. And they're gonna come and sing a tune that was written, I think, back in the early 2000s uh, for a young lady named Anna Sutton. Uh, it's called, I'll Get My Angels. Come on up, dear girls. Make me sound good. I, uh, did I answer your question? I, I, yeah, I my mind is going a bit. <laughs> no, it's great. That's great.
So Tom, in, in 40 years, you've seen the music industry change drastically, and that's not a, not a secret. But you've always had a, you know, a, a foot in the music industry, and then obviously you've been a part of the church. And if you know Tom, you know that his, your faith has always been very important. Your family's always been very important. But I'm curious, you know, can you say anything about what, it, what it's like to, to hold tight to your faith while also being um, in an industry that you know, may not always lead people to uh, acting Christian um, or, or just may, making that hard sometimes. Uh, you know, uh, well, I, I mean, you, you kind of could kind of say that, Clay. Uh, you know, the funny, the, the great irony, and uh, I think there's probably, I shouldn't say this in public, but I will. This is a church. Um, you know, the toughest, the toughest time I've had in the uh, music industry was with the Christian music industry. Mm. Mm. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just not not all of it. It's just it's funny. Uh, I mean, you know, I, you know, this congregation is full of people in in all different uh, walks of life, and uh, you know, I think it's it's just a challenge generally um, to to carry on your faith on a on a daily basis. I. I mean, you know me, Clay. I'm, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty secular guy. I mean, I, I love life and uh, I embrace it. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't. Without faith, without my faith, well, which was instilled in me when I was a kid, which is always why I love seeing you know seventy children sitting up here every Sunday morning, hearing hearing the truth, and then going down to uh, Sunday school and, and kids church and hearing from those wonderful. Uh, volunteers, because uh, it's going to stick with them. It's, uh, you know, that's biblical. So. Well, you've, um, you've mentored and, um, you know, been a father figure to so many of our youth and young adults um, in recent years, and um, we're grateful for that. Um, and I don't think you can even understand. Uh, I've had lots of them reach out to me. And, what are we going to do without Tom? And I said, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, but, um, um, uh, you <laughs> You'll be fine. Uh, and what am I going to do without you? It's funny, uh, you know, I was raised Baptist, and my lovely wife, Sarah, was raised Presbyterian, and we found this church in 1979, uh, early 80, right after Tulu was born. Uh, and and uh, she never thought too much of me being a Baptist. Uh, and this was a great, a great place for us to, uh, to find. But now she's moved down to Jekyll Island and she's going to a Baptist church. <laughs> so I'm, I'm reverting uh, back, to, back to your roots. Which is funny, you know, I, I mean, many of you understand this. I, in, the, in the year 2000, which kind of relates to what we're talking about here, I, I started writing, I tried to write a song for all of the graduating seniors to sing, uh, graduating from high school, high school. And I'd always ask them to bring me a scripture verse so I could base, so have something to work with. And, and they were great about it, but every once in a while I'd get, uh, like why well, I remember one kid came up to me and said, ah, uh, will you write a song uh, based on the Bible verse, uh, uh, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. <laughs> What book is that in? Yeah, that's what I, 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 I didn't want to be, uh, I didn't know how to re react to that. But, um, another one was, uh, I want that verse from, uh, I think it's from Genesis. Uh, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> and I had to tell both of them, I, I said, you know, neither of those uh, are in the Bible. And if you would have uh, well, tell us about to uh, Woodmont Baptist, you would know that. <laughs> The challenge for Chris Cox, our, our current youth <laughs> minister. Well, Tom, tell us about the third, uh, this third song. Sure thing. Um, if I can get my, uh, and I apologize, I think I'm a little out of tune with the piano. Or today, since we're honoring me, the piano is a little out of tune with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sarah, will you tell me when I'm in tune? It's the piano. I knew it. Um, we're going to do a song that was from a little music, uh, kind of a song cycle I wrote or put together with the kids. 
from the book of Joshua. Um, it's called The Other Side. We've sung it here before. My good pal Don Hart uh, has uh, set this to uh, in a beautiful piece for the consort. This is a song about, uh, you know, Moses took those uh, rascally Israelites all across the desert for 40 years and had to put up with them and deal with all their stuff. And then he fi they finally got to the Jordan and they could look over uh, and see the land of Canaan, the promised land, which is what Moses was waiting for and looking for all those years. But he didn't get to go. <laughs> He didn't get to go in. It's one of the real curious moments in the Bible where uh, God said, no, uh, you're not going in there. And it, so in the next book, Joshua went in. And uh, as they crossed the Jordan River, he asked uh, all the priests to set 12 stones and built an altar to uh, memorialize that day. So that's kind of what this song is about. So here's Eliza and Brooke again. <clears throat> if I get this guitar just a little more out of tune with the piano, everyone's cavities will fall out. <laughs> nice. Set the stones, gather us. 
pick. You, know, you know, Tom has had an amazing career. He's written lots of songs for Woodmont and in the Christian music genre. He also uh, has written a bunch of uh, country songs, uh, at least seven of which became number ones over the years. So um, um, this is church, but I think you can maybe send this away with one of your uh, one of your hits. Bought a beautiful diamond ring I offered it to the sweetest thing I know And she said she would take it We started making some wedding plans She looked at me and she took my hand and said Are you sure we can make it? I said my granddad still in love with my grandma I said my dad still thinks my mom's the sweetest thing he ever saw you see I come from a long line of blood and when the times get hard I won't give up Forever's in my heart and in my blood You see I come from a long line of blood well, Years went by and we had a son Now he thinks that he's found someone for him And they're planning a wedding Called me up on the phone today Just to see what I had to say to him Did I think he was ready? Well, I said what his grandfather used to say to me It's been handed down forever It runs in the family I said you come from a long line of blood And when the times get hard well, You won't give up Forever's in your heart and in your blood I said you come from a long line said you come from a long